ever get that feeling, you know, like you're stuck in your own head, worrying about what everyone else thinks, second guessing every decision. Yeah, we've all been there. It's like this constant loop of me, me, me. Totally. But what if I told you there's a way to feel lighter, freer, less weighed down by all that mental noise? Sounds amazing. Yeah. How do we do that? That's what we're diving into today. Yeah. The Zen concept of no self. No self. Yeah. Okay, now before anyone tunes out thinking this is some mystical, empty your mind kind of thing. Right, like we're going to disappear into the void or something. Exactly. It's not that at all. Promise, it's actually about freeing yourself. It's interesting, right? Because the concept of no self, and this is coming from Zen Buddhism, by the way. Yeah. It can seem kind of paradoxical. Like, wait, what? At yeah, first? It does. It's not about erasing who you are. You're not denying your individuality or anything like that. Think of it more like a shift in perspective. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So instead of constantly viewing the world through this lens of me and mine, mm. we can explore the possibility of a more interconnected experience, one that's a lot less self-centered. I love that. And you know, it's funny, I actually stumbled upon this whole idea while reading about mindfulness of all things, and it just clicked. Oh, wow. Yeah, like this idea that if we let go of this tight grip that we have on ourselves, right, we can actually become more present and open to everything around us. And that's where the beauty of this whole thing lies, yeah. because when we release that constant need to be the center of attention or to be right, to be better than, we actually open ourselves up to genuine connection. And growth too, right? Absolutely. Okay, so how does this actually work in practice? Because honestly, sometimes even something as simple as just ordering coffee feels like this huge exercise in ego management, you know? Oh, 100%. So let's go back to that pizza analogy we were talking about earlier. Okay, yeah. Imagine you've got everyone sitting around a table and they're all obsessed with getting the biggest slice. It's stressful, right? Oh, the worst. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But what if, instead of focusing on your own slice, on getting the biggest one, you focused on the shared experience of everyone enjoying the pizza together? Okay, I can see that. So by letting go of that need to grab the biggest slice for yourself, you're actually enhancing the experience for everyone, including yourself, right? Exactly, you got it. And that's just one tiny example. Imagine approaching a disagreement, not from this place of I'm right and you're wrong, but with genuine curiosity and openness to try to understand the other person's perspective. Yeah. That's no self in action. Wow. Okay, so it's kind of about shifting from this me versus you to us. Yes. That actually makes a lot of sense. Now, have you experienced this firsthand, like where letting go of that sense of self led to something positive in your own life? It's funny you should ask that. Yeah. I used to be so attached to being right about everything. And I'd get into these really heated debates just to prove my point, you know? Oh, I know the type. Yeah. Exactly. But through practicing mindfulness and really incorporating some of these Zen principles, I realized how much energy I was wasting on these ego-driven arguments. And so letting go of that need to be right all the time, it allowed me to approach conversations with a lot more openness yeah. and curiosity, which in turn deepened my relationships and my understanding of, well, everything really. That's incredible. It just goes to show you how this, honestly, this seemingly abstract concept can lead to actual tangible changes. For sure. Now, I know we've been throwing around letting go a lot here, but it's important to remember that this isn't about becoming passive or losing your sense of self completely. Right. It's more about recognizing that our sense of self, that me we cling to so tightly, it's actually more fluid than we realize. Mm. Okay. So if our sense of self is more fluid than we think, then what does that mean for how we approach our goals, our relationships, even our own personal development? What happens when we loosen that grip on the me and open ourselves up to the we? Something to chew on, 